much did you know about me before you wrote that story? Your story is just I, literally every line. <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> and just seeing that happen again in your story? <laughs> well, that's just, you know, that can't be a coincidence, obviously. <laughs> that's fantastic. Wow. So there's some pieces of that story that are quite profound and are uh, right in reality. Shrya said, I want my light to shine, Jasmine. Jasmine kissed Shrya's forehead and said, Glow, let your glory shine. You're worthy, Shariah. Therefore, Shariah turned away from her magical mentor and faced the dark forest before her. Jury, it's, it's, it's just incredible. It's so Holy Spirit inspired. And that's why it moves me to tears because I just felt like he literally spoke to you. He literally spoke to you about me. Want to know what story you're in? Discover your own tale in books written about you. Imagine a library in heaven that contains books with stories written about you and me. These stories could be in any genre, from fantasy, mystery, action adventure, or romance. Do you want to know what story you're in? I love that you are using what you have in a powerful way to reach people that's outside of the box. Yeah. It's you're using your skill set to lower the the wall that would keep people from mm. wanting to receive and you're releasing what you have mm. in a way that can be received by someone who doesn't yet know the love of God. Yeah. And I I really commend you for that. Oh. It is a forerunning that you are doing. Thank you. You're pioneering it. Yeah. Um, a couple people text me, what what does this mean when I sent right. them the link? Right. Um I've never heard of this before. That's right, because I <laughs> think jury's the only one doing it. I know. And I really commend you for it. Thank you. Oh, Marcia and Edwin, thank you. Order a personalized, revelatory, unique story to discover the glory inside your heart. Peer into the pages of the Father. Become a legend and discover your identity and destiny here in Legends of the Wind. Click the link, order now. And hello and welcome to the Legends of the Wind podcast. I'm Jury Shank and we have with us... Kylie Shank. This is Kylie. She's our special guest tonight. Back, back to you by personal request for many of you. Everyone really enjoys Kylie on the show and enjoying her conversation and her very great wisdom. Even though she's a young little girl, we love that about her. And welcome to the show, everyone. Thank you. Now, tonight we are doing our first time on the show uh, multi-streaming our software has been upgraded and we're now on youtube as well of course and also on facebook so thank you very much for joining us tonight and watching on all these platforms now for those of you who are new to our program this is legends of the wind and this is a place where we combine the prophetic with the creative arts with storytelling and i write prophetic stories for people now tonight we have kylie as our guest but the story I'm reading tonight was written for someone else. But typically, uh, I write for someone that I've never met before, and they come on the show for the first time, and I deliver a powerful prophetic story. And that story really impacts their lives. It brings a lot of hope, encouragement, revelation, and even healing, and gives them understanding of their identity and destiny. And that is what we do with the stories. Now, one of the things we like to say about uh, these stories is becoming a legend. What does that mean? Becoming a legend is like what is on a map. You can see things that have symbols and shapes that mean different things, and it helps you figure out your journey, where you are and where you're going. And when you become a legend, you become uh, an understanding of who you are and where you're going through this story. And that is part of the revelation that we bring. Now, it's also very important to understand that these prophetic stories are a revelation. And uh, when we talk about after the story, it's a time for interpretation, and then we look to see the application of it. Another very important thing is that these stories are meant to be understood symbolically, not literally. So some stories may have a realistic feeling or sense to them, but they're always meant to be understood symbolically. It's kind of like dream language and interpreting a dream. And so uh, Kylie, uh, Alicia says, hi, Kylie and grandma and grandpa are watching too so they say hello thank you guys for being on the show and watching with us 
And also, we do welcome any comments or questions throughout the show. We would love for you to be involved in our discovery and revelation of things. And um, so the story is titled The Pearl and the Pond. About a year ago in the summertime, uh, a friend of mine who was dealing with some health issues contacted me and requested a prophetic story. And this is the story I got for her. And, uh, and so she cannot uh, be a guest on the show, but we thought that this would be a perfect time to share it with you. It's a very fun, magical fairy tale that brings a lot of ideas of healing and revelation. So Kylie and I are going to talk about it afterward, and we'd love for you to be involved as well. So thank you so much for joining us, Kylie. Thanks for being my guest. How are you? Good. Are you excited for tonight? Yes. Now, do you remember this story at all? No. Okay, so this is pretty much fresh for you, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, one thing I love about talking with Kylie on the show is she has a lot of insight, and so I really appreciate what she has to say. And She can come up with things that I would never think about, so that's great. Uh, Jeffrey Adams says, Hi, Kylie. Thanks, Jeffrey. It's been a long time. It's good to see you. Mike Gates. Oh, my gosh, it's Mike. Uh, hi, Jury and Kylie. Thanks, man. It's good to see you, too. We got people coming in from multiple places. This is so cool now that we can do this. Okay, guys. Kylie, what time is it? It's story time or it's 8.05. Well, it depends on what time zone, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> cool. All right. Here we go. The Pearl in the Pond. The sun shined down on the little forest as the birds flew through the air. Life was teeming everywhere, and the forest animals loved to drink from a pond that was in the center of the land. A fountain or spring that bubbled up from deep in the ground fed the pond and kept it full. The water had lily pads on it that were far away from the shore. Small goldfish would swim around and look for food in the deep water as they were always hungry. At the shore was a large bullfrog with many warts or bumps on it. He was the ugliest of the kind, but he loved the lily pads and the entire land that this space created. However, there was one particular lily pad he loved the most, for it had a large white flower that blossomed in the center of all the other empty pads. This flower was the center of his attention. The bullfrog dove into the pond and swam deep down. He thought to himself, what can I do to show my love to this lily pad flower? The bullfrog thought and thought, and he thought some more. I know, I can give her a seed from the oak tree that would bring us great wisdom. But the frog rejected that idea because he realized the lily pad flower would not match well with an oak tree seed. The frog reasoned, wisdom is always good, but maybe there is something else. Under the water, the frog looked up and saw the sun shining through the surface. The sun's rays created amazing shafts of light, and they made the entire underwater world beautiful. The frog said to himself, I know, I can get a mirror for the flower. She will love seeing the beauty of herself, for that is her nature. But the frog rejected this idea too because he realized this flower already knew its beauty, but he didn't want to entertain vanity or a false identity. The frog reasoned, beauty is essential to any flower, but maybe there is something else. The frog kept swimming in the pond and he found his way underneath all the lily pads. The frog saw that beneath this flowered lily pad were roots that went down far below into the bottom of the pool. His eyes examined the roots of his favorite flower, and he dove deep into the darkness below. Down, down, down he swam, and the water became murky and muddy. The taste of the water changed as well. It seemed bitter and sad. The frog felt terrible and depressed. He knew that this beautiful flowered lily pad had roots that were not in healthy soil. He thought to himself, what can I do? How can I help and heal these roots? The sunlight somehow shone down and its beams of light carried healing in its wings. The shimmer also revealed something the frog did not see before. Its powerful rays opened up the frog's vision to see a large white pearl that rested on the bottom surface of the pond. 
the roots of the beautiful lily pad flower wrapped around the pearl. The frog swam close and he carefully removed the twisted roots away from the pearl. He bubbled in excitement and found delight in this discovery. He said to himself, I know this is the perfect gift for my beautiful flower. It is the reward she has been waiting and looking for all these years. The frog tucked the large white pearl under his arm and swam to the surface. However, to his dismay, a tremendous storm with lightning and thunder was pouring down rain. The wind blew hard and pushed the frog and his treasure away from the center of the pond and his precious lily pad flower. The frog climbed to the shore and found shelter underneath a tree. He longed to bring this pearl of great price to his beautiful delight and let it heal her. The frog cried out in only the way he could, and that was to croak and croak all night long. The frog fell asleep in the stormy night and had a dream. He couldn't tell if it was a nightmare or a dream of life. But as he dreamed, he could see the beautiful lily pad flower open its blossom in the moonlight and transform it into a woman with blonde hair and a shimmering gown of silver. This beautiful woman literally walked on water and left the pond and came to the green grass that surrounded the spring. She got on her knees and looked up at the stars and said a little prayer. Dear moon, dear stars, fill me with the sun's light once again. Let no more storms come my way, I pray. I am weary of this long suffering. Give me hope. Give me life. Fill my heart with delight, for I am dying to see the dawn of my midnight dream. The dream continued. The frog sat up and hopped toward the woman. He carried the pearl of great price. The woman's tears dripped down her cheeks, for she thought this was the end of her time. The frog croaked and cleared his throat. Excuse me, beautiful flower of the lily pad in the center of the pond. I have been seeking to find a gift for you, for your healing. Here, I found this in the roots of your pad. The woman sat up and looked at the frog as he held out the pearl. Her face showed shock and amazement as she took the pearl from the frog. The woman examined it and turned it in her hand and looked for any defect. It's perfect. But how does it heal me? The frog replied, I believe you can trade this pearl into the heavens and you will receive all that you need. The woman said, You are a wise frog. I have never heard of this before. This pearl has many layers from years of pain and suffering. It is priceless. Where do we go to trade this? The frog replied, I know exactly where to go if you would only follow me. The woman stood up and with care held on to her pearl and looked down at the marvelous frog. The amphibian creature led the woman through the forest in the moonlight. There was no path. There was no trail. It was a journey of mystery. After some hopping and walking through the trees, the frog led the woman into an open field. At its center was a wishing well. The trees surrounded this open field were all the trees surrounding this open field were all different. Not one was the same. Their branches had fruit on them, and the smell was amazing and refreshing. Come, said the frog, take your precious pearl and drop it down. The waters from this well come from the tree of life. The woman stood over the top of the well and looked down. Below was the water, and it reflected the beautiful stars, for it was night. In this vision, the heavens opened in the reflection, and she could see an amazing rainbows of shimmering light. The water spoke and asked, What do you need? She said, I want my healing. I want my life. I need to redeem the time of my suffering. The woman traded the pearl and dropped it into the well. After a small splash, the waters spoke again. It is an acceptable trade. Heaven grants your wish right now. The woman looked up into the sky, and she cried out from the depths of her pain, Forgive me for my bitterness. The very next moment, one tree with fruit on its branches stood and walked over to the woman. 
He spoke to her, Here, my precious daughter, eat of this fruit, and life will enter your body again. The tree pulled off of its branches for what looked like a peach and offered it to the woman. The woman took it in her to her hand and sniffed the fruit. Her eyes opened wide with delight, and she took a bite. The woman made a noise of glee as she tasted the fruit. The juices poured down over her mouth and dripped from her chin and cheeks. As she chewed and took bite after bite, she glowed with bright, soft light. No longer was she reflecting the light of the moon, but sunlight from within her spirit shined out. The transformation was remarkable. Light filled her entire being, and the trees surrounding her song sang out a song that the wind carried over the land. Everyone heard the music and felt the power of its healing. No one could deny its significance. The woman looked down at the frog as she beamed. She said, <clears throat> You may be an ugly bullfrog, and that the world has rejected you, but I thank you for everything you've done and said. You gave me hope long ago. Now it is the fulfillment of my promise at last. May the heavens reward you. The frog blushed, as only a frog could, and he smiled humbly. He said, It is not me, about me, or my gift, but it is about you and what you needed. Today I delight in all that you have become. I found your pearl and knew it was the way out. The woman and the frog walked back through the forest and returned to the pond. She once again walked on water. The frog stood behind and watched the woman return to the form of the beautiful lily pad flower. At last, the storm left. The frog smiled and thought about all the events of the night and all that had happened. He fell asleep under his favorite tree. The next morning, the frog woke up, yawned, and saw that the morning sunlight shone its rays through the trees. He looked at the pond, and to his amazement, all the paths of the pond had their own flowers in full blossom and bloom on them. There was even more life coming from this spring, and the frog's favorite flower was even bigger than before. It was stronger and had more power than anyone could remember or imagine. And it was once again the center of attention, full of wisdom, beauty, and understanding. The healing finally came, and it changed everything and everyone around her. The pearl in the pond was a long season of sacrifice. But in the end, the characters of this story found new life and hope. Inceptio. Great story. Cool. Thanks, Kylie. So tell me, what, what are your thoughts about it? Well, I think that the pearl, I if I read correctly, that the pearl goes over a long time of sacrificing and chemicals to make it. Mm -hmm. So that it must have been the rough stage that the flower went through. Mm, right. Do you, know, you remember learning about how pearls are made in the ocean and clams and oysters? Do you know about that? No. Well, what you just said is pretty right on. So an oyster or clam that can uh, get a grain of sand in it uh, gets inside of it, uh, in the inside the shell, and it's still alive. And it irritates uh, the animal of the oyster. And uh, over time, the oyster produces a milky material that goes around the, the grain of sand. And it keeps irritating it, and so it adds more and more. So the more irritation and the more difficulty it goes through, the time passes, the oyster gets larger and larger. Does that make sense? Does the pearl get larger? Yes, it does. It grows. So sometimes it starts off with a tiny grain of sand and gets bigger and bigger. How, how, what's the biggest pearl? I don't know. Maybe, maybe this big. It yeah. could be bigger. And so the larger it is, right, the more valuable. Mm -hmm. So real pearls, uh, and the larger they are, are more, they're more valuable. So what do you think about the pearl now in the story, now that you've learned that? Well, I think that it's been redeemed for a sacrifice, of course. Mm -hmm. And then now that, so kind of how the 
the plant grew, the flower grew. Oh, when the plant grew and the flower grew? Well, the when the pearl was redeemed, mm -hmm. just like a clam gets bigger while more producing, mm -hmm. the flower grew and all the other little pets did too. Right. So you basically talked about what happened at the very end of the story, and that was the solution to the problem, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so tell me about the frog. Tell me about what he wants and what he's doing. Well, he's a mono ugly frog, but he has a big purpose. What's his purpose? Well, his purpose is to help this beautiful flower grow into an even more beautiful flower. Mm -hmm. But he, when he wants a gift for it, he does when he goes for the mirror, he's, he says he did not want to make corrupted flower by making it think, oh, I'm so beautiful. Okay, because the flower already knew its beauty, right? Mm -hmm. Remember, there was a seed of an oak tree, and he said, no, there's something else, right? Mm -hmm. So if it wasn't the seed of the flower or of the oak tree, and it wasn't a mirror, even though wisdom is good and beauty is essential, mm -hmm. so he found the pearl. Mm -hmm. Which so, was the life, which was basically extra life. What, which is life? Okay, that's good. And so um, then he saw, he fell asleep and had a dream and saw mm -hmm. that the flower turned into a beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about that? How's that mean to you? Well, I think that the flower had, had, was not able to come out in the sun mm. and it was stuck at night. So it d decided to come out at night mm -hmm. because it was its only choice. Okay. And it knew it was close to the end. Mm. at the time and and so tell me about the flower or the woman and her suffering what do you think about what she was going through she was probably going through a lot mm -hmm. that she wanted freedom mm -hmm. and did she have any hope mm, very little mm. or none right yeah and so how did the frog bring help to her what did he do and what does it mean to you? Like, if you can find the meanings, the symbols in it. Well, I think we should go down to the roots. The water was bitter because mm. the su the flower did not have what it wanted. Mm -hmm. And I think that pearl, mm, the pearl might have been captured kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. It was stuck in those roots. Yeah. And so the roots were twisted around it, right? Mm -hmm. And, and so you said it was murky and bitter, right? Mm -hmm. So so was the atmosphere down at the bottom of the pool? Gloomy. It was not good, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So then uh, what happened next? Look, what, were you, what, what, what can you see in the story after that? Well, he saw the thunderstorm. Mm-hmm. And the thunderstorm must have been another suffering mm. stage. Mm-hmm. And then what? Well, that was basically the last suffering stage before the frog came and helped. Yeah. Now, uh, when the frog offered to speak to the woman, uh, what is the meaning behind what he did then? He tried to help the flower to help it, but at the time, he did not quite know okay. what was going on completely. Mm -hmm. And where did he take her? He take, took her to a wishing well, and I believe the flowers were like healing fruits, mm -hmm. and then how they were all different for all different purposes. You mean the fruits on the trees? Mm -hmm. They all look okay. different, probably the different purposes. Mm, that's good. I like that. And then the well of speaking, maybe, so the, you said it, it goes, ties into the tree of life, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and probably the other trees tie into the tree of life too. That's good. I like that. Didn't even think about that. That's great. So what happened at the well and what does that mean to you? Well, she dropped the pearl in and traded out her what she wanted. Mm-hmm. And what did she say? Forgive me for my bitterness. Right. So that's a very important sentence. And it makes me think about maybe the pearl was created because of that bitter water and maybe her suffering over a long time uh, made her bitter in her heart right so she kind of caused it maybe she probably needed healing in the first place but maybe the time and the long suffering 
she didn't make good choices and she made herself more better potentially mm. does that make sense yeah. and so but she didn't stay that way right mm -mm. tell me what happened next and then why is that so important well she woke up and all of the flowers were there were all flowers there mm -hmm. that means that it all worked the dream was actually like real wow great so the healing actually happened right in the night in the night and finally it happened right mm -hmm. okay so now we've gone through the story and done a lot of interpretation what do you think you or i or anyone in our audience can learn from it what's its application and by the way guys as we go into the this next part of our conversation add some comments yeah that's right add your comments ask some questions ask kylie a question too let us um, pick our brains and let's let's work at this out together and discover you're new not things. actually saying to pick your brains but... <laughs> right so uh what do you think is the application for us what's the wisdom that you have i think the theory will will what it, what you should learn from it is that suffering's worth it suffering's worth it mm -hmm. why is suffering worth it because you start with a good with a good spot you start nice then you go through suffering and go down the scale so you start in the middle you go down but as but as you go through that suffering when you finish you're all the way at the top so you're gonna get a better better a better result mm -hmm. wow amazing guys this is great so tell me what would you tell people in the audience uh, let's say that someone in the audience is suffering really bad mm. what could you tell them about this story and how would you encourage anybody that's having a hard time keep trying keep going too mm -hmm. yeah and so um do you think that they feel any feel good about where they are right and so how would you encourage them besides keep going how would you inspire them that one once 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 you get past it there will be a much greater future than you have ever imagined wow that's great so um what would that look like how what, what kind of greater imagination of the future would there be what paint the picture well, let's say you started from a lonely farmer and then you were making money off of a few eggs. But then one of your chickens accidentally died mm. and it all and it, it went lower mm -hmm. until you couldn't barely make it. And then you went through this time. Sometimes it goes so far down that you go poor, but then but then you some you get a job. Somebody gives you a job, a very high tech job, and you suddenly you have a mansion and all these cool things. Wow, that's good, Kylie. Uh, isn't it great that she gave another example through another kind of a small story? That's cute. Thank you. <laughs> great. So, um, um, what else can you talk about in this story? Well. I think we covered it all. You think so? Yeah. Okay. And um, so, Kylie, you've seen me do a lot of shows now mm -hmm. with other prophetic stories with guests that come on. Yep. Can you talk about about what you have seen when you and Mom watch the show, and how how have you seen other people be encouraged? Like, talk about that. Well, there it's like your mind is literally red. Your future, your past, it's all red. Mm hmm. And you probably mentioned this but you were once writing a story for someone and god told you to write it on a specific date mm -hmm. and right you were writing about a fox and an owl can mm -hmm. you tell me this name of the story owls among us owls among us so right then an owl was having a battle with a fox dad thought it was years ago but it was actually right there right at that time and what happened? Well, the they had a church split. Mm -hmm. chur somebody's church split it. Yeah, and so the story really encouraged the pastor, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so that's a powerful time. So what Kylie's talking about 
is many ex examples of a prophetic story really being a timely thing for people in need. And, uh, you know, I don't take any glory about it, but it's amazing what these prophetic stories can do is that many of these people, like with that person, the pastor, I, kn I didn't know him. I didn't know what was going on. And um, it was a powerful time of encouragement. And these stories contain hidden treasures in them. And they bring a revelation and understanding uh, to people's identity and destiny. Uh, the stories can speak to someone's past and about what they've gone through. And then I can hand them their future in the story form and they can walk out and finish their parable. So Kylie, what else uh, have other people, have, have, what else have you seen about other people being encouraged? Well, most of the people you only meet 15 minutes before the, mm -hmm. before the show. And others that you know, such as me with my story, because I have more than one <laughs> videos with him. Um, you, you set aside what you know about that person and go blank. You get your, let your mind yeah. go blank, and you get it. And even and sometimes the stuff are mostly not even things that you didn't even know about mm -hmm. them. Yeah, it helps you with your relationship with that person. Mm -hmm. And yeah, thank you, Kylie. Yeah, she just perfectly described it. So what I have a wonderful gift from heaven is I can go into the heavenly realms and go to the library of heaven. Library it's a, of heaven. It's a place where many books and scrolls are for many stories. And as you can tell, like for tonight's story and the other story that Kylie mentioned, these are not necessarily literal. They are fairy tales, fantasy, mystery, action, adventure. Um, it's all sorts of different genres that can tell a story about someone's life and give them the hope and encouragement. So. If that makes any sense to you and you are interested in learning more about it, you can go to our website, legendsofthewind.com, and see all sorts of other previous shows that I've done. And you can also check out our book. This is volume one. In this, it contains 20 prophetic stories that I wrote for other people, children and adults. And there, there are a lot of the stories are like what I read tonight. And uh, just because they're written for someone else, all of us can understand and get something from them. And this book can be found on Amazon uh, and also at legendsthewind.com. And if you want to receive a prophetic story for yourself or even gift it for someone else, uh, you can go to our store and order one there. Um, it takes about three hours for me to do a whole story, two hours of writing and, and cleaning up the edit and then an hour for the show for, for the guest. Also, if you don't want to be a guest, but you still want a story, we can totally do that as well. I can give it to you privately. And uh, Alicia, my wife, who you know, did the design of the book and also the painting behind me, um, she is now back doing illustration orders for book covers. So if you check out uh, some of the things that she's done for the other clients, other customers, this is Robbie Little Story, The Clock is Ticking, and um, Linda Aldera for her story, The Power Within. Uh, Robbie, oh no, um, this one as well. So these are keepsakes that you have a single print of, of your story, and Alicia can do the designs and the artwork for them, and you can hold on to them forever and cherish them. You can show the inside. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I can do that later. But and so also, don't forget that we also have on Audible the the audio version of this book. Now, um, it's not just me reading the story. It's got great music. Mu it's cool music, sound design. What about sound the sound effects? What about halfway there, Kylie? Tell them about that. So, well, um, halfway there is my story, and it reflects me completely. I mean, it's got my favorite pla planet, Saturn, and he's got an audiobook for it, and it's amazing. And the real thing I like about it is that I helped with make the audiobook, so my voice is actually in there. Yeah, so she played herself, and she did wonderfully. So check that out on Audible. And, um, yeah, so um, any other thoughts, Kylie? So let me ask you this. 
Why is story so important? Well, it can reflect your life, even ones that are even ones from the very long past can still have a story structure that will still reflect everything. It can mm -hmm. still reflect things. It can reflect well how you've gone toward things. For example, you might have gone. Go, let's go back to that poor farmer person mm -hmm. that he's going for a crisis, mm -hmm. and let's go for a hero story. Um, the person is might be in a part with a battle with the enemy and is in the losing point, but in another f second or flash, he's in the winning wow. spot. So he basically had difficulties and overcame, right? Mm -hmm. Overcame and took the strike. Great. I love that, Kylie. Now you, have to, you have to take a risk. Very good. I love that. And don't just sit there waiting. And waiting no, don't be waiting. passive. Well, we have a wonderful comment from Malvina. Check this out. She is an amazing host, so articulate. Thank you, Malvina. It's good to hear from you. Thank you. Do you remember her? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you so much. And um, I really appreciate your wisdom and insight. You know, uh, you carry a lot of depth in your heart, and I'm so glad that um, I, I have you as a friend and a daughter, and I'm so glad you're in my life. Thank you for everything that you do. I'm called a bookworm. A <laughs> bookworm. That's funny. Yeah, well, you read a lot of books, but that's great. We all need to read a lot, don't we? All right. So, um, like I said, for those of you who are new to our show, we wanted to do this story and also talk about what we're doing here to kind of introduce what uh, Legends of the Wind is all about for new people. And um, if you enjoyed this program tonight, uh, please hit the like button. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel and also hit the notification bell so that you know more about future broadcasts. Our show is on Monday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, right now, uh, we did an announcement, I think yesterday, that we're giving away some free stories for the show. So far, there's three of them, but so far two have been taken. So there's one left. Yeah, so if you want to have a free prophetic story and grab the last one, please email me at support at legendsofthewind.com. Before time runs out. <laughs> or you can direct message me on Facebook. So this is your last opportunity to check it out. And then what we do require for this particular freebie is that you be on, on the show on camera. And uh, well, there's some agreements like a release to sign and also get you scheduled. So um, um, Malvina says, love you guys. And then Alicia says, thank you, Kylie. You did a great job. And then Grandma says, worms can turn into beautiful butterflies, Kylie. You are on your way. <laughs> cool. So everybody, thank you so much for being part of the program. I do want one. Well, Malvina, you just grabbed it. That's great. Uh, Malvina, please give me your email address or email me at support at Legends of the Wind. Email me and I'll get you signed up and we'll get you scheduled. So thank you so much, Malvina. By the way, Malvina has been a part of my life and Alicia and Kylie's life since we've been in Wyoming. We want to thank her for all the times that she's been encouraging us in our trials and tribulations. So guys, thank you so much. And then Mike Smith says, Kylie is amazing. So that's superb. Mike, you've always been a faithful fan. Thank you for being part of the program. Uh, and Alicia also says thank you, Mike. So everybody, uh, please share this video. We wanted to, like I said, we wanted to let people know more about what we're doing as more people are finding out through our multi-stream. Uh, share this video. Tell people about uh, ordering a story. Go through our content that we already had. We've already been doing this almost a year with brand new stories. There's so much stuff that we've written and many lives have been changed, encouraged, and transformed. And so we do this as an offering and a gift to the people. And so thank you so much for watching tonight. Kylie, any final thoughts to our guests and our audience? 
You're good? Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, everybody, uh, we're waiting for people to get scheduled for hopefully next week on Monday. And we'll see you on the next broadcast. Thank you very much and have a good night. Bye. Bye-bye. See you soon.